Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to the Bosch Report. Today, we take a look at the international and local fixed income opportunities available to investors, specifically focusing on the bond markets. First, let's turn to the Trinidad and Tobago bond market and situation. And in terms of yields and year-to-date changes, what we can notice is that there hasn't really been that much change for the year. In fact, this yellow line, which represents the Trinidad and Tobago dollar yield curve, has been pretty much fixed throughout the year. The blue columns, as you can see, pretty much stable. On the short end, there have been some very marginal increases in bond yields, just about two basis points, or 0.02%. Whereas, to the longer end of the yield curve, if you look at the blue, the blue uh, bars, there has been some downward shifts to that end of the yield curve, ranging between just around five basis points to 10 basis points, or 0.05% to 0.1%. Now, not much to talk about in the Trinidad and Tobago bond market. So what has been accounting for this relative lack of movement? Well, a couple of factors. One could be the date of, of TT dollar bond investment opportunities that have been coming to market. And yet to date, there has been just one public auction, a $1 billion TT eight-year government bond, which was priced to yield around 4.1%. In the private market, there have been some corporate issues as well as some private placements of government securities or those that are in the running. But again, nothing much to absorb the excess, excess liquidity in the financial system. And speaking of excess liquidity, let's take a look. On a quarterly basis, excess liquidity has remained relatively consistent. In September 2016, it was around $3 billion. And as at the first quarter, then March 2017, it was just around $4.3 billion. The most recent figure, as at May 2017, suggests about $3.3 billion on average in excess liquidity, which is quite significant in a deposit base in a financial system with total deposits of just over $100 billion. Also, excess reserves remain quite quite high in the context of a required reserve ratio for the banking system of over 17, around 17%. So what are investors holding their TT dollars looking for fixed income opportunities to do? Well, you could go and invest in 10-year ten ten TT dollar bond, government bonds, for example, which would yield you around an annual return of just around 4.4%. One of the big challenges, access to these bonds, they are quite short in supply, if at all. On the other end, there are traditional bank or savings, depo savings deposits, uh, which are not really rewarding, just around 0.2% on average. So you're always better off by investing, which is one of our mantras. And there are other alternatives in the short term to make better use of your Trinidad and Tobago dollars. One of these could be looking at a money market or income type mutual fund. And on average, these funds provide returns of 1.3%. On the higher end is the Save Invest Structured Investment Fund, which offers 1.75% per annum. And then you could look at alternatives or substitutes to traditional deposits, such as repurchase agreements or deposits with non-banking financial, non-banking finance institutions, uh, which offer much better returns or improved returns as opposed to traditional banking deposit rates. And in the case of repurchase agreements, as we can see, these offer for one year periods between 2 and 2.5%, depending on the provider you select. Switching gears and turning to international markets, well, the bond market rally continues in, US, in the US dollar bond space. As we can see over the past few years, there have been quite healthy returns for fixed income investors on a five year basis, for example. Uh, emerging market investment grade bonds have generated about a total return of around 17.7 percent for investors whereas in the high yield space it's been much more rewarding at around 42.3 percent over the five-year period and year to date this is up up to friday uh, investment grade bonds image of emerging market nature on average would have generated 5.8 percent and the high yield bond space would have generated just around 6.6 percent in total returns for investors. Now this seem, may seem counterintuitive to some investors who follow the markets, given that the US Federal Reserve, who control US monetary policy, would have increased rates three times in the, rec in the recent past. And you would expect that bond yields would go up and returns would go down a bit. This hasn't been the case. Bonds have been holding their value in terms of pricing. Uh, and the expectations for future rate cuts 
well, sorry, rate increases, despite the indications from the U.S. Federal Reserve of the same, have been reduced with inflation in the U.S. trending below forecast for the past four months or so. Bringing it back home, how have U.S. dollar denominated Trinidad and Tobago government bond issues been doing with the rate increases and the state of the general U.S. dollar emerging markets space? Well, so far, there was one major, uh, one major announcement with the downgrade back in April. And as you can see in the green column, most of the, most of the Trinidad and Tobago bond issues back in April would have spiked in yields for a very short period of time. As we can see, for example, the Trinidad and Tobago 2026 bond, which, which pays a coupon of 4.5%, went up to as high as 4.87% in yields. Since then, however, yields have somewhat corrected, and the same Trinidad and Tobago 2026 bond currently offers investors around 4.6% in US dollars. So we see some rally in the prices of bonds and a decrease in yields. Uh, which is pretty much in line with the state of the general market in U.S. dollar bond emerging market space. Now, how does Trinidad and, Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago's U.S. dollar bond stack up to its international, well, regional comparables? Well, as we can see, it still offers pretty good value when compared to some of its regional comparables, such as Mexico 2026 bond, which is rated triple B plus, offers a 3.56% yield to maturity or annual return, and Trinidad and Tobago's 2026 bond, as mentioned, which is also triple B plus rated, offers 4.6% yield per annum to investors. And as we can see, some of the other co uh, comparables in Latin America and the Caribbean, again, are much lower yielding. So, fading away from the government space or, or sovereign space and looking at the corporate and quasi-sovereign space, are there opportunities for investors still in what appears to be a highly priced market? Well, yes, for the whole to maturity investor, you, you should be more concerned with your credit, with any credit risk that you feel. So ensure that you hold bonds that you feel comfortable with and ensure that the return or annual return or yield to maturity that you're getting yourself into is appealing to you. So opportunities in the corporate and quasi-sovereign space, yes, there are a few. For example, Petrotrin's 2019 bond is yielding investors right now, which is just about two years to maturity, around 5.1%. Uh, the Sajikor 2022 bonds, which pays an 8.875% coupon, yielding an annual return of just around 5.2%. And the Trinjen, well, that should be Trinidad Generate Generation Unlimited. It's five and a quarter percent coupon. 2027 bond, which is further out, just around 11 years, is yielding just around 5% per annum to investors. So the moral of the story in the U.S. dollar bond space, again, focus on credit quality, focus on holding to maturity, and as long as you're comfortable with the risk of the underlying issue, there are opportunities available. That's it for this week's Bosch Report. Have yourself a wonderful investing week. For more information, you can contact us at 226-8773 or 2BOSS. Visit our website at bossinvestment.com or email us at invest at bossfinancial.com. Have yourselves a great investing week again. This has been The Bosch Report.